My name is Doug Tuga, and it's my pleasure today to talk to you about professional licensure. If you have some questions about professional licensure, they might involve what is a professional engineer, how did professional engineering licensure come to be, what are some benefits of becoming a licensed engineer, what, what does it take to become a licensed engineer, what do I have to do, and then what is the process for registration, and then I know that I have to take these exams, do you have any strategies for passing those exams? Let's start off with what is a professional engineer. A professional engineer, which is just almost always called a PE, is a person who has really earned the trust of the public by a combination of things. Formal study, uh, professional experience, and demonstrated knowledge. Demonstrated knowledge comes in the form of passing those two exams. A professional engineer bears the responsibility for the technical merit of their own work, as well as the responsibility for ensuring that that work protects the safety, health, and welfare of the public. Uh, they're also responsible for supervising other engineers and ensuring that the quality of their work uh, meets the standards of, of the quality of their own work as well. So this means that because the safety, health, and welfare of the public is at risk, uh, the professional engineer really has to hold themselves to a very high ethical standard. Now it turns out that, that of course, licensure hasn't existed forever, uh, but it, it was surprising that it took until 1907 before professional engineering licenses were created. Before that, anybody could claim to be a professional engineer. They could, they could uh, put out an engineer uh, sign and say, I can design buildings, I can design bridges, I can design anything that you need. Uh, and 1907 means that, that we're talking about things like pressure vessels for mechanical engineering, electrical circuits, uh, power systems. These are somewhat dangerous things. And, and sadly, uh, some of the designs were flawed and many people were hurt or killed. And so it was in Wyoming in 1907 where uh, the first professional licensure for engineers was created. And today, every state has passed engineering licensure laws. Licensing is done on a state-by-state -state basis. There's no federal engineering licensure. And so if you know that you want to practice in Indiana, you need to get licensed in Indiana. If you want to practice in Wyoming, you need to get licensed in Wyoming. The good news is that if you're licensed in one state, it's, it's relatively easy to get licensed in another state. You just have to uh, fill out some forms and perhaps uh, you know, demonstrate some, some uh, expertise, uh, probably not by taking the full exam again, but perhaps you need to pass a, a short exam about the state laws in the state that you're applying for. What are the benefits? Why should I care about being a professional engineer? Well, there are many. The first of them is prestige. PEs are really highly respected, especially by other engineers. Uh, they understand that they come in, in the same sort of category as other licensed professionals. Uh, and, and this means that they are, they are forming into an, a relatively elite group. It also means that, that you're going to have some opportunities for career development. Employers are relatively impressed by engineers who have their PE license. In some fields, it's absolutely mandatory. In other fields, it's optional. Uh, and and in, in other fields, it's emerging to become more mandatory. So for example, right now, as, as a professor, it's not strictly required in the state of Indiana that I have a PE license. However, there are, uh, there are always legislat le legislat legislative efforts that are going forth that would say that not only a professor, but most certainly a department chair would need to have a PE license. And so uh, it's possible that 10 years from now, for example, that you'll need to be a PE in order to be a department chair. And that means that, that there would be some limitations in my career if I didn't have that PE. The same thing is true for other fields as well. Flexibility. Uh, this means having the PE license means that you can open up your, your career options. You can, you can create your own consulting firm. You can become a specialist. You, you can become an expert witness. There are lots of things that, that would protect you in the event that you're working for a company and that company starts to downsize. Well, now you could, you could go out on your own. And if you don't have the PE license, that's really not a feasible option. This means that, that really your career is unlimited. It's really only limited by your own ability and effort. Uh, studies have also shown that most PE, PEs earn higher pay throughout their careers. Uh, this might be 5%, uh, which if you're talking about a person who's earning $100,000 a year, a, a similar uh, PE might earn $105,000 a year. Now, that's not anything to sneeze at. That's, that's a su substantial amount of money. And, it, of course, that also comes with it uh, opportunities for higher promotions as well. Authority. Only a PE can sign and seal engineering drawings. This idea of signing and sealing a drawing means that you as a professional engineer have carefully reviewed this work. You have either performed that work directly or it has been performed under your direct supervision and you certify that this drawing and the, and the objects that are, are indicated in this drawing will protect the safety, health, and welfare of the public. 
This means that it's a, it's a very high level of responsibility when you are signing and sealing a document. And it's probably the number one thing that a PE uh, can do that other engineers are not able to do. Uh, opportunity. Many government agencies and educational institutions are really emphasizing licensure. So if you wanted, for example, to be the city engineer of Valparaiso, you would need to be a professional engineer. But, but furthermore, some uh, companies that, that have a lot, of public, uh, a lot of public interactions, so here I'm thinking of places like, uh, like power companies or, or utility companies, uh, there the safety, health, and welfare of the public is a concern, and so therefore the professional engineer uh, license might be a very important thing to get promoted in those companies. And only about 20% of today's practicing engineers earn their license. So doing so really gives you a distinction. It really sets you apart from the crowd of, of the average engineers, of the other 80% who haven't really demonstrated their expertise in the same way that you will have. How do you become a PE? Well, first of all, earn a bachelor's degree in an engineering field from an ABET accredited university. You're well on your way to that. Uh, senior design is, is one of the last steps toward earning that bachelor's degree. And this really, really sets you far apart from the average person. And this is by far the hardest of the steps, and it's one that you've already almost completed. Successfully pass the FE exam, the Fundamentals of Engineering exam. This really focuses on broad topics from your undergraduate studies, everything from calculus to, to circuits, to and, and depending on your discipline, uh, it, there'll be special topics that are included as well. So for example, if you're a mechanical engineer, there'll be thermodynamics. If you're an electrical engineer, there'll be questions about electronics. Uh, and and the, the, the Fundamentals of Engineering exam does come in different flavors for the different disciplines. After you've finished the FE exam and, and have gone to work, you'll have to perform four years of qualifying engineering experience. Uh, and that's in an engineering field supervised by a qualified engineer. Uh, and so if you think that this is something that you're interested in doing, uh, choose a field where you'll be doing genuine engineering design work or just engineering work. Uh, and that will be qualifying engineering experience. Some states require you to get recommendations from uh, either from just uh, average people, not average, but from, from people who know you, professors and employers, uh, but also perhaps from other professional engineers testifying to your ability and to your character. And then after you've done those four years and filled out the application form, then you have to successfully pass the PE exam, the Principles and Practices of Engineering. And that focuses more narrowly on your own field. So there it wouldn't be quite as broad as the FE exam, and it would really be more related to the work that you've been doing for those past four years. So if you finish with an undergraduate degree at age 22, go to work right away, get your FE exam done, uh, and then four years later at age 26, maybe 27, you can take the PE exam, and then you've got another 40 years left in your career of being a PE and, and reaping the benefits that were described earlier. So, uh, most people take the FE exam either during their senior year of college or shortly after graduation. I would really strongly encourage you to take it during your senior year because if you put it off to May, then it'll go to June, and now it's July, and now I've got a job, and now I've got a dog, and everything's going to accelerate after you graduate. I know it doesn't seem that way, but things are going to get busier for you after you graduate. So try to squeeze it in. You know, March or April of your senior year, uh, that would be a great time to take the FE exam. Uh, it, take, it covers a broad set of topics, and, and you will do better on this exam if you take it while those topics are still fresh in your mind. You might say to yourself, gosh, I hardly remember Calculus 3, but put yourself five years down the road and think how much of Calculus 3 you will have forgotten then. So uh, you'll have an opportunity to review, uh, and uh, you can take the, the, we offer review sessions here at Valpo. I'm going to talk to you about that in a little bit. So find out when those review sessions are going to be. Typically, they're in January, February, March and then take the, take the review sessions and then, and then take the exam uh, shortly after that. The FE exam is given at test centers across Indiana. It's computerized, so you need to go to a location to take the computerized exam, and it is discipline specific. So you'll either take the CE version, probably not in this class, ECE version or the ME version, and then there are other versions as well. 85 to 90% of Valpo students pass this exam on their first try. And so I would really strongly encourage you to, to consider uh, taking the exam because you'll get it out of the way. You know, you might find yourself down the road taking a career turn that you didn't expect where the PE is important, but now you have to go back and review all the stuff you saw as an undergraduate. Whereas if you took the exam now, you'd be able to, to be done with the FE exam, and then down the road you might decide to take the PE or you might decide not to take the PE. Even just taking the FE exam gives you a qualification that will really benefit you. That's known as the engineering intern, the EI, or the engineering in training, the EIT. And it varies from state to state. So EI or EIT status can be a really big advantage during your job search. So if you uh, take the exam and then you pass it, 
Well, now you can put that as a qualification on your, on your, on your resume. And even if you've already got that first job, that's still a great qualification for your second job. If you know that you want to earn your PE license, seek jobs and promotions that will expose you to increasing levels of technical responsibility, and then take the PE exam at your earliest opportunity. As I mentioned earlier, for some of you, that could be as early as 26 years old. In most states, PE licenses have to be renewed every two years. And that at every two-year uh, renewal cycle, you have to have continuing education hours. You have to have 30 hours. Of those 30 hours, at least one hour must focus on ethics, and at least one hour must focus on statutes and rules of the state of Indiana. Of course, that's if you live in Indiana. Now, it might sound like that's a lot of time, but 30 hours over two years, that's like a half, that's like a 20 minutes, 30 minutes a week. That's really not very much. And, and uh, usually, uh, I do that in big chunks. So maybe I'll take an online class and, and I'll get the 30 hours that way. Or um, as, as a professor, I can get credit for teaching new courses that would contribute to that as well. The National Society of Professional Engineers, the NSPE, is an organization that is really composed of professional engineers. It protects the value of your license by ensuring that legislators are always aware of the importance of engineering licensure. It provides resources for continuing education, including those, those 30 hours that I was mentioning. It provides social and networking opportunities. And it keeps you informed of emerging issues that can impact professional engineering. Each state also offers their own PE organizations. So, for example, in addition to belonging to the NSPE, I also belong to the Indiana Society of Professional Engineers as well. So, strategies for passing the exam. There are some really great books out there. Um, if you really uh, study well from a book, I would encourage you to get one of those books. Uh, visit the website. Uh, it's the, an organization called the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying. Don't worry about the surveying part. You're just taking the engineering part. So the NCEES actually puts on this exam uh, on behalf of the 50 states. So the, the 50 states don't each have to write their own exam. They all hire the NCEES to write the exam. And then you take the exam from the NCEES, and then they report to the state that you have passed the exam. They have a lot of good resources on their website, as well as on their YouTube channel, NCEES Media. And that can give you lots of information about the, the computer-based FE exam. But probably the most useful thing you could do is to attend the review sessions that are offered by Valpo Engineering faculty uh, throughout the spring semester. Then register to take the exam at a time that fits well in your schedule. You know, maybe uh, we don't have classes on Good Friday. Maybe that's a day that you don't, uh, you don't have religious uh, obligations. Take it on a Good Friday. Uh, you've got two weeks of spring break. Maybe take it during the second week of spring break. Uh, get some good rest in the first week and then uh, review a little bit. Take it during spring break. I would not encourage you, for example, to have classes on a Monday morning, jump out to take it on the Monday afternoon, and then come back for a Monday night class. That, that would probably be a rough time. And so that's it. Earning your PE license has many personal and professional benefits. It involves passing two exams and having four years of professional engineering experience. There are lots of resources available to help you both online uh, and, and on paper and here at Valpo. And you can find more information and register to take the FE exam at the address that's shown here.